Hello, hello and welcome. My name is Mini Betrayal and this is the earthly manifestation of my insanity. Yes, this is a single train network um, that is, I, I don't want to say it is the biggest that has ever been built, but it probably is. Running through some quick stats, um, so we can check this by putting some things into console. We have a total of 6,172 train stops. Um, there they are, that's what it looks like when you zoom in close enough to see them. Uh, we also have um, 56,030 signals and chain signals. We have 4,800 trains. And we have, this one takes a bit longer, 1,333,268 meters of track. Um, yeah. 1.3 thousand kilometers. It's probably the biggest rail network that's been built. Um, next question is, what does it do? Well, it essentially runs a computer program. Um, if you remember in a video of mine a few weeks ago, I hypothesized that you could make a Turing complete system entirely out of trains. I have done just that. This runs an emulation of something called a cellular automaton, in particular one called Rule 110. This was suggested to me in uh, the comments on a subreddit post, uh, on the Factorio subreddit. So thank you to those of you who suggested that. Um, you owe me about a month of my life now. So uh, the next question is, why did I build this? Anyway, um, so let me head up to sort of the middle of this and I can show you a little bit more. Whoops, there we go. Um, right, so I'm not going to explain in this video what really Rule 110 is or how it works or even how, you know, this monstrosity works, um, except that this is a system where you can essentially make a computer program by putting trains in specific places, letting the thing run, and then reading the results afterwards. Um, so I've set up the simplest program that this automaton can run, which is where you start off with a single train. This light over here represents a train. In particular, it represents a train up here. It represents this one. Uh, if you follow the circuit network, um, there hiding behind there, the train's in the way, there is a rail signal, which is currently red, um, which is sending its signal into this network, which makes its way all the way back over here and into that particular light. So, yeah, all of the logic, every single decision, every single bit of logic that this thing does is all done by trains. The only circuit network components are entirely for use in this display because I either I can't or I just don't want to figure out how to make a display out of trains for this kind of thing. Um, so yeah, what it should do, it should start off with this one train. It will iterate through these lines coming down and by the time it gets to the end, this display here should look like this little display down here, which is our end result. Well, it's our expected result. Obviously this one is twice as big, so each single light down here is two by two up there. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of stages we have to do to get this thing running. So what I'll do if I go up to a bit over here, um, the reason this is called rule 110 is because of what I'm about to do. So if I turn the number 110 into binary, we get 01101110. So first I have to plug that in up here. So we've got 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. 
Then I have to set my initial condition trains, which I've already done up there. Then I just have to set everything going. And from here, there's two stages. First, all of these trains up here will sort of filter through into the network. Some of the trains just go around in loops or back and forth. They're already in place. This is like my source of electricity, if this were a real computer. So firstly, all of that will filter through. Once that is done, this train will take off and that will actually kickstart the actual computations. When this train does take off, this timer will start and this will give us an idea of how long this is actually going to take. And then once we've finished, a train will come back in here and once the train reaches the end, the timer will stop and we'll see how long it took. It will probably be a very long time. So yeah, that's it for now. I think it's time for a time lapse. you have it 25 days 2 hours 31 minutes 30 seconds and 9 updates yes that is in days um so a couple of things to mention firstly that is real time days you, if you have a look at my ups up there it's running at about 33 frames or somewhere between 32 and 33 um 33 updates per second i should say not frames um this clock takes that into account. If I look in this combinator up here, that's what that 33 means. 33 UPS means on average, this runs at 33. So, you know, this is 25 actual real world days of runtime. That's why I haven't been uploading very much recently. Um, so uh, another thing to mention in that time lapse, if you were paying attention, you may have noticed a couple of stutters and a couple of pauses uh, as it was running through. Um, there were a couple of bugs when I built this. Um, I did as much bug testing as I could before starting, um, but you know, there's always something that sneaks through, you know, a chain signal where there should be a rail signal or vice versa, a station in the wrong place, that kind of thing. So I did fix those on the fly where I could. Um, you know, if you're 13 days into a program, and all you have to do is like move a station by two tiles. You don't want to have to restart the whole thing. So that's that explains that. Now, um, in the next couple of days, I don't yet know how long it's going to take me to make it, but in the next couple of days, I will upload an explanation video. So um, all of these green lights that were flickering around, the red ones over here, um, I'll explain what all of those were about. I will go through this monstrosity in a bit more detail so you can see you know what is actually going on behind the scenes because i can't really make a 25 day recording and upload that to youtube um and in that video as well i will also um post a link to my blueprint book which i use to make much of this um as well as if i can find a decent place to host it a map download link so you can you know run it yourself if you want if you're insane but the important thing is that it worked we have our expected result here um, you can 
see that each you know, group of four lights there match one from here, which means that this is indeed a Turing complete computing system. Um, so if you had enough time and you built one of these things that was big enough and let your computer run for a couple of years, you might actually be able to do something useful. Um, but essentially it's just a proof of concept. Um, I'm going to hopefully never do anything like this ever, 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 ever again. So yeah, if you do have any comments, please feel free to leave them below. I'll answer what I can. If you have any questions, I would probably advise at least waiting until the next video comes out. Um, alternatively, you know, I can't stop you. Feel f Well, I could if I wanted, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to stop you from leaving questions in the comments section. Um, what might work a little bit better if you have a more in-depth question is come and say hello to me on my Discord. There's a link to that in the description as well. If you're after more information about what Rule 110 is, I will also put a link to the Wikipedia page in the description. Um, but I will also explain it a little bit more in the follow-up video in a couple of days. But yeah, that is about it for now. I am going to leave it there, and in the meantime, I will say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Thank you.